we are busy with the fivefold ministry and we've been busy with that for the last uh, four weeks tonight is the last uh, topic on the fivefold ministry and uh, therefore tonight is the evangelist tonight we talk about the evangelist and that is something so close to my heart um, i am first and foremost an evangelist and then any any other but uh, evangelist is part of who i am and part of my heart and and if you're an evangelist please give us a, a thumbs up or a heart give us some some love or a thumbs up if you at heart if you're an evangelist if you like talking to people about the word if you like telling people about jesus christ and um, his ministry on earth um, please give us some some love give us a thumbs up if you think it's important uh, for us to have evangelists and um, you see the picture behind me um, this is not uh, this is a green screen a picture behind me and i've selected this picture specifically for this gentleman sitting on this wall staring longing for the souls in the city behind me and um, i trust that every one of you will see this in the picture and value this picture tonight um, and sitting on the wall and longing for the people in the city longing for people after the heart of christ and uh, thank you to, for everyone joining us let's pray together lord what a privilege for us to to be around your word tonight what a privilege to just sit around your word to be in the company of fellow believers of fellow brothers and sisters talking and telling people about jesus christ lord it's about no one no person other than jesus christ the holy spirit the father lord it's all about you it's all about you lord it's all about you it's not about us holy spirit to help us in this evening that we as the people will not be in the way of the gospel being carried forth and carried out and brought to everyone lord we just don't want to be in the way holy spirit help us you be the the preacher the preacher after we've delivered the word you be the one running with the word assisting people to understand it to get it and to run with it we thank you for that in jesus name amen so we're busy with the fivefold ministry and tonight we talk about the evangelist and we find that part in ephesians 4 verse 11 to 16 and um, i'm not gonna gonna read um, all of that but i will read us um, the the first part of of um, uh, ephesians 4 uh, verse 11 and um, the uh, and i see i don't yes i have it with me my apology and he himself gave some to be apostles ephesians 4 verse 11 some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and we've we've already discussed the other four tonight we we look at the evangelist and um, when we when we look at the evangelist the the greek word for um the evangelist uh, is um evangeliso evangeliso and um, it's to announce good news or glad tidings um, how cool is that how, how what a great word is it that the, the the description the definition of the word evangelist is to announce good news or glad tidings and that's what an evangelist is do they announce the good news of the gospel they announce jesus christ to the people and uh, you and i are privileged to be part of of this evangelical team and uh, every one of you on the call every one of us are evangelist it is just part of it why because we talk to someone else about jesus christ the key is that someone that's got a heart of an evangelist will take it one step further and will go and tell people but every one of us on the school are actually an evangelist to some sort because you've you've talked to someone about jesus christ you shared some word you prayed with someone you cared for someone you've stepped in to assist someone that is all part of being an evangelist showing the church jesus christ that's the the function of an evangelist and the qualification of an evangelist exactly the same as the other four and um, the qualification of an evangelist like the others must have the character and qualifications of an elder and we find that in in 1 timothy 3 
in and in Titus 3. So 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 3, you can go read it, go and um, go and, and read it. And that's the qualification. A person that uh, wants to be an evangelist must have the character qualifications of an elder. And that is always part of, of all five of the fivefold ministry. Now I want to just say something about the fivefold ministry quickly. And um, remember, we've dealt earlier, we've dealt prior to starting with a fivefold ministry, we dealt with the gifts of the Spirit. And um, I just want to use an analogy with regards to the two. And the gifts of the Spirit, as we find in 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts of the Spirit is given to each believer as the gifts to go and demonstrate the church, go, go and demonstrate the power of God to the church, go and demonstrate the power of God to the people um, who don't believe yet for them to see the power of God so that they want to hear uh, about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. So the, fire, the, the gifts of the Spirit is given to each one individually to go and demonstrate the power of God. In that same manner, the fivefold ministry, the, the, the fivefold ministry as um, we teach about it, or the fivefold gift um, of the ministry as in Ephesians 4, um, that is given to the church. So the gifts of the Spirit is given to each individual believer and each individual believer, believer will develop in either one of the nine gifts of the Spirit or in all nine. You, you can eventually operate in all nine gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit. The same with the fivefold ministry. The, the gift of the fivefold ministry to the church. The gifts of the Spirit is given to every believer. The fivefold ministry is given to the church. So what's the church? The collective number of believers. So us together... We are called the church. Whether you're part of Father's Heart Digital Church or not, doesn't matter. We are still part of the church. If you're a follower of Christ, we are the church of Christ. Then we start fighting about which, which church we are in and which church is more correct or interpreting the word more better than another. It's not important. It's the church, the function of the church. And you and I are the church. And the fivefold ministry is given to the church as a gift. For us to use and they um, as we've seen the in the roadshow dr frost on on thursday friday saturday sunday he is operating under the mantle of an apostle he is carrying the mantle of an apostle so that means if you a member of father's art digital church you're operating out of the function out of the the um, function of the uh, apostle because our, our leadership our um, covering that we have is the function of an apostle and so every person in every church the church will function according to the the leadership of that church to what they are called for in the fivefold ministry and uh, we are privileged um, that dr frost is called as an apostle and um, he's operating from that and that's our covering as members of Fathers of Digital Church. And if you in another church, um, go find what's the root um, gift of your pastor um, so that you can understand the gifting of that church, the, the, the covering that you have from the church because it comes, it flows in the gifting, in the ministry of the leader of the church. But remember, we collectively, doesn't matter which church you're in, we collectively, we are called the church. And um, if we're in the church, we operate in the fivefold ministry. And again, every person can operate in, e in every one of these fivefold ministries. But you have one gifting. You have one specific anointing. You have an impartation from someone that you received to have a specific gift. For one to be stronger, your, your character, your spiritual man, your spiritual being will be stronger in one of these fivefold gifts. Um, once you start operating in these gifts, um, helping and assisting the church. And I trust that I've positioned that um, correctly for you to understand it. I've, I've had contact with the members over the week in the, in the um, tour that we had with Dr. Frost. And uh, I just found that maybe I should uh, make this little part clear 
for all of us to understand it better. So the ministry of the evangelist. So let's look at the ministry of the evangelist. And, and um, as I said earlier, I myself, Daniel Fonsell, I'm first and foremost an evangelist. Any one of the fivefold gifts, I'm first and foremost an evangelist. Then the other. Because I said, remember, you can operate in all five, but you have an anointing. You have a gifting for one of them. And I truly believe that my true gifting is from the, um, as an evangelist, um, although I have developed the gifting on the, in the others, in the other ministries um, to a certain extent as well. But um, the ministry of an evangelist will have a passion for souls and, uh, and a soul saving ministry. That's an evangelist. And you know, when I talk about an evangelist, someone that's got a passion for souls, someone that's got a soul saving ministry, whose name comes up? You, you immediately thought of someone. There was someone that you encountered, whether it's, it's um, via videos that you watched on YouTube or Facebook, or you immediately, some name came up to you. you I mean, if I, if I look at a ministry of an evangelist and you ask me whose name comes up, Reinhard Bonker. I've been a big fan of, of the late Reinhard Bonker, and we all know that his mantle has gone over to Daniel Kalenda. Years before uh, Pastor um, Bonker passed away, his mantle was, was given over. His ministry, his anointing, his gifting was imparted into Daniel Kalenda, who is now continuing with the Reinhard Bonker ministry. Um, with the evangelic outreaches of um, uh, um, Reinhard Bonnke. So um, the evangelist will have a passion for souls and we find the, the scripture reference there in Proverbs 14 verse 20, 25. My apology. Proverbs 4, I nearly swallowed my teeth. Proverbs 14 verse 25. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. A true witness delivers souls. And an evangelist will have a, pos a passion for souls and will deliver souls. Um, uh, the ministry of an evangelist will have signs following their ministry. And we find the scripture reference there in Mark 16 verse 15 to 20. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And you and I have a heart for those people who are not believing because they will be condemned. And we want to help them and assist them to, to, to turn from their wicked ways, to, to be saved. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Those who are saved, these signs will follow. Verse 18. They will take up, uh, take up serp serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Um, are you willing to pray for someone that, that is ill? Verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into the heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord's, the Lord's working with them. And confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. And we've just read the scripture recently as we had Ascension Day. This is what happened around in that time. Then the ministry of the evangelist will have a wisdom of winning, the wisdom of winning souls. And the reference there is Proverbs 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he who wins souls is wise. So it is wise. To win souls. Why? Because Jesus Christ commanded us to do so. Jesus Christ said to us, go out, go preach the gospel, go, go win people for your faith pavilion, as I call it. Uh, uh, the ministry of an evangelist will have a compelling ministry to bring sinners to the gospel feast. Luke 14 verse 23 and 24. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Go and find them. Compel them to come in, that my house be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. And the important thing is an evangelist will go out and go find the people. An evangelist will 
Go and talk to people, timeously and not timeously. Um, years ago, I don't rem I, I, I assume you can remember the days of people wearing those little armbands. What would Jesus do? Can you still remember those? What would Jesus do? Armbands. You know, those were the most amazing uh, signs that people worn on their arm, on their wrist, for you. For that they open for you to talk to them about Jesus Christ. And I lie you not that many people I had the conversation about why do they wear that armband and the story that they told me and I could then talk to them about Jesus Christ. And I can still remember one day in Bolton Nut, years ago I had to go buy specific kind of bolts for the boat and I could only get them at Bolton Nut and I was in the, in the business and they were busy. There were loads of people with loads of counters and um, the guy that served me, that assisted me, a friendly young guy at one of those bands and I said to him, but why do you wear that? Why do you wear that band? What does it mean for you? And he said, my girlfriend said, I must wear it. And just there and then, I told him about what Jesus Christ has done for him and there and then, he decided to pray after me and I've led him in the sinner's prayer at the counter while people were selling bolts and nuts all the sides of us, both sides of us, people were selling bolts and nuts and he prayed after me the sinner's prayer um, because he was right at that moment he was right and ready and the Holy Spirit had me at that specific place but that, that little armband for me was part of my mission field it was something, it was a reason to talk to the person and I can still remember that. I don't even think of the business still exist. But I know that person will one day be with me at the right hand of, of God with Jesus Christ. Um, the ministry of the evangelist will not be a ministry in the local church. The, the evangelist will be part of a local church. But the evangelistic ministry is not in the local church. In the local church, the pastor will regularly from time to time have a specific service where they ask people to invite people into the service to get their family and friends in there and that will be part of the outreach of the church in the church in the congregation in where they are and then the the pastor will will preach a sermon on accepting jesus christ and and uh, make a, a altar call for those who want to accept jesus christ and that is how the local church will be part of the ministry of an evangelist but the the evangelist true evangelist will not be in the local church operating within the local church although connected to the local church they will be out there they will be out there from jerusalem to samaria to all ends of the world they will be out there go and finding people and call it bringing people into the to um, the ministry they will be called into the world and that's the the true evangelist they will be called into the world the areas of evangelism if we can discuss that um, house to house evangelism and i think this is something that we do on a regular basis without even realizing it some of you i assume a lot of you is doing house to house evangelism without you even realizing it acts 2 verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers and whom of us are visiting friends and inevitably the the conversation turned to jesus christ the, the to the gospel and eventually to um, the spirit and we demonstrate the the gifts of the spirit and we pray for one another and that is all part of the evangelism because that's how we pull pull people in and show them the power of the spirit the power of god for them to want to want it themselves and to follow Christ. Um, another scripture verse on that is just a, a little bit further on Acts 2 verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And you and I have to go and save people all the time. Grab them out of the fire. The next uh, area of evangelism is child evangelism. Matthew 19 verse 14 but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And there is a definite child evangelism ministry. And I have a good friend that in, is in the, in the children's ministry. 
and he is a children's evangelist and he's going from school to school he's got a, a whole um, uh, evangelism set up we uh, go from school to school around our in the towns around Pretoria in South Africa um, going uh, evangelism at, at schools for little children because Jesus Christ said let the little children come then retirement home evangelism and um, this is so important and um, uh, it's in Psalm 71 verse 9 do not cast me off in the time of old age do not forsake me when my strength fails and we sometimes forget about the older folk the people who served all their life the people who were committed in, evangel in evangelizing the world but they turn old they get older and they go end up in retirement homes and we in a situation with that with my mother-in-law at this very moment where um, she's in a care facility but do we actually go and look after the people in those places and um, we had the privilege of meeting the pastor who had a ministry in the retirement village where my mother-in-law used to stay and um, we had the privilege of meeting that pastor and he had a heart after the older people and he's an evangelist but he had a little service every Sunday for them we cared for them and made sure that they um, end up in um, the right place um, with the um, relationship with God hospital evangelism and uh, hospital evangelism is so important and uh, Matthew 25 verse 36 I was naked and you clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came to me verse 43 I was a stranger and you did not take me in naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me and uh, hospital evangelism is so important and it is a form of evangelism that you have to have a heart for you have to get in there and go and pray for people and pray for people and i was privileged to be part of a hospital evangelism team for uh, quite some time and i can still remember my first home cell that i attended my first home fellowship that i attended way back years ago um, our home fellowship leader's name was mark and um, uh, within the first week of being part of the home um, fellowship he phoned me and said there's a lady that requested um, for us to go pray for her um, because she's sick in hospital and um, he, uh, he, he picked me up and we drove to the hospital and we gone in to pray for her and uh, when I started talking to her I, I asked her whether she accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and she wasn't sure and I just kicked in as evangelist and I saved her, she uh, prayed the sinner's prayer behind me and I took the Bible because I thought it was her Bible and I wrote in the Bible her name and a date that John 3 and um, said that her life will never be the same and that night she passed away um, but on our way home Mark said to me, you know what I realize now that we never prayed for her to be healed I said, well she will never die and the next morning we learned that she actually passed away so the first person that I prayed for in my hospital evangelism um, passed away that same evening. But you know what? The next day the daughter phoned me because she f they found out that we were there. Phoned Mark and then f Mark phoned me and um, we've gone back to the hospital. And I then realized that it was actually the hospital Bible that I wrote her name in and um, as a witness. And um, her daughter asked the hospital if she can actually take that copy of the Bible. And to have it as a gift and um, the key is we have to always first find the person's heart because what happens if you pass away what happens if you if you are healed but you still go to hell and that's the that's the key so let's continue home Bible um, class evangelism whom of you are part of a home Bible study whom of you are part, part of a home evangelist uh, action reach out acts 20 verse 18 to 21 and when they had come to him he said to them you know from the first day that i come to asia in that manner i always lived among you serving the lord with all humility with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the jews how i kept back nothing that was helpful but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house testifying to jews and also to greeks 
repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I, it's important for us to go from home to home and just go discuss, tell people, teach them about um, Jesus Christ, teach them about the gospel in all humility and with many tears. And trust me, that is part of, part of having a home Bible class evangelism. And I will encourage you to become part of one if you're not leading one at this very moment. So um, personal evangelism and um, personal evangelism. I've got a, a whole stack to read, but unfortunately due to time, I, will only, I only selected certain verses to read. So please go read Acts 8 verse 27 to 40. I'm just going to read small parts of it um, due to time constraint. And um, so he arose and went. We're talking about personal evangelism. So he arose and went and behold, a man from Ethiopia, Ethiopia a eunuch. Um, and the eunuch was a guard that was specifically there to protect the human courts, the, the places where the, the ladies stayed, the women's courts, sorry, not the human's courts, the women's courts, my apology, ladies. Um, but the eunuch was specifically a guard that protected the women's courts where the women stayed. And um, of a, a eunuch of great authority and the uh, uh, Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. And um, you can go read the story. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. And you will, if you read it, you will find it so amusing that he then asked this um, eunuch why he's reading this and um, if he understands what he's reading and he says no and he helps and assists him and um, he then uh, plucks him out of hell and uh, tell him about Jesus Christ and he became, he became a believer. Then we talk about public um, mass evangelism and this again is typically the Reinhard Bonker mass evangelism um, uh, that happens and again there's just too much to read but it's Acts 8 verse 1 to 26 Acts 8 verse 1 to 26 but I'm only going to read a little bit of it and um, I have a, a friend who in most of his life about 30 years his mission field was going into Africa showing the Jesus film um, his name is Willem and um, I always honor Willem because he was a true evangelist and he truly has done what God has told him to do. And he evangelized vast areas by just showing the Jesus form. And um, in that part, I'm going to read verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes was one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many whom were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. And please go read the balance of that um, scripture to, to learn about this. But our time is up. In summary, an evangelist gives us a passion for the lost. An evangelist is there to stir up the passion for the lost. An evangelist carries a passion for the lost. An evangelist will come and help and assist the lost to find their Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just come and thank you for the teaching, for the word that we could share tonight of the fivefold ministry with regards to the evangelist. And Lord, we just want to honor you for you told us to go and tell people. Go and evangelize the world. Go and tell the people about Jesus Christ, that he died for us on the cross, but that he rose again. And that you and I can be saved and we can find our redemption by accepting Jesus Christ at the cross. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking this word further and developing it in every person's heart. We say that in Jesus' name. Amen. Absolute privilege sharing with you tonight. Have a good one. Bye-bye.